there's a few things you can do midsummer to tidy up and maybe control the growth of your plants. And what I'm going to show you is minor pruning. Uh, my little kitty follows me everywhere in the garden. But this is boxwood. And uh, this one's a little more formal. Uh, we're keeping it in its size and its shape. So where I normally might use the hand shears to thin them out and prune them back, I'm going to use this shears here. And again, this is early summer, midsummer, and I'm just going to come in here and just, I try not to prune too many of the leaves uh, so there's no damage. So here, the other option just to reach down and it just, you know, gives you some work to do. And you just reach in and prune these shoots off. like so. Now, if you're gonna do any more severe pruning, I recommend doing that a little earlier. But you're just gonna come in like this and just prune these shoots. Always be careful with whatever shears you're using. And I like doing it by hand. There's a lot less damage to the leaves. And this plant's gonna grow back up and it's going to look like I haven't even touched it uh, in about a month or so. But the main reason I'm here and as I walk behind this container you can just look at the beautiful lantana which sort of likes dry environments. Uh, we have an orange one and a yellow one and another plant that sort of likes dry environments uh, throughout parts of the year are the summer blooming amaryllis and they're just fantastic in containers. So the plant that you may have in a garden is known as taxis or you. Now there's one important thing about pruning yews or taxis is that you probably don't want to prune after August 1st. And I'm going to give you the date, August 1st, because invariably we're going to end up, you know, second week in August. Oh, I forgot to prune that. But I have found that if you prune ewes in many parts of the country into September, they're going to produce new growth. That's And, and this new growth that they're going to produce, if you prune it too late, it's going to be very soft, very delicate and it is subject to winter damage. So in this case, I'm just gonna keep it in bounds. I like these shears. They're not the easiest to find, but they have a longer handle and a shorter cutting area, but they're easy to use. And you just come in I prefer hand tools. I mean, there's some great battery operated and gas powered shears, which I use for things that usually require uh, more pruning or if I have a lot of pruning to do, like a whole hedge. And again, with this, if you need to take it back, like a foot down, or um, 18 inches shorter, because eventually, as you can see here, it's growing over the window. When my parents first moved into the house here, this U was almost the height of that gutter. At least it was this tall. So we had to take these down. And we did that uh, probably in March. Uh, I'm gonna say by the end of March, so we're just going to go in here and prune it. But the one thing I really want to leave you with again, because I see a lot of these damaged, is after August 1st, depending on, 
The other thing, my name is Mark Viette, and I live here in the Shenandoah Valley, and we have what we call a mountain climate, and that is a climate that is not, uh, you know, c controlled or moderated by um, the ocean or a lake. So we get very cold temperatures and hot temperatures and cold temperatures. So if you prune your use too late, they're going to be damaged and the tips are going to turn brown if you prune them too late. The U we just trimmed sort of into that round shape. Uh, again, it's a little more formal. I like uh, informal. That one that we just pruned was a Japanese U. This one is Taxus Piccata, and it's known as the English U. And it's a darker green, and it, it you know, kind of just lays flat and Sometimes you, you have to prune it. We don't prune this one, but once every maybe three years. And the best way to prune this, again, if you're going to prune it really hard, I'm going to recommend you do that early in the season, probably sometime in March or the beginning of April. But if you're just going to prune it in a minor way, you're just going to come in by hand with the hand shears and I'm going to bring this down in growth where it is still attractive and it really has this you know I'm looking at all of these around us here. They really have a great shape. Well, by the way, since I'm here and you're probably looking at this unattractive evergreen uh, to my right, it is known as Mugo Pine. Now, I'll do a more in-depth tip on this, but this is subject to a disease that is known as Diplodia tip blight. Just remember tip blight. And this is a disease that occurs, depending on where you live, in March and April. And it's called tip blight because the tips die back. 
And if you let it progress to the point where you see it here, I'm probably gonna have to remove this Mugo pine uh, this coming season or this winter because it's already very unattractive and it's died back quite a bit. And if you're gonna treat Mugo pines for Diplodia tip blight, you need to do it in March and April according to the label of the fungicide that you're gonna be using. But let's get back here. So I am just thinning this out, pruning it, letting more light, and reducing the overall size, as you can see here. And if there's any portions that are dying or have died back, I'm just gonna come in and remove them because new portions are going to grow and cover over this like when I first started. Again, use are great to have in a garden. They, they like a well-drained soil. They're great foundation plants around the home. And they're also great plants to have in your gardens that are around your house. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time in the garden.